the first things first up on the line up to talk about is uh evo is up coming up right around the corner um if you know anything you know i i, I tend to do a lot of fighting games on the channel um i definitely uh have tapered off the last like year or two of fighting games but still i mean you know my channel used to consist of nothing but like Mortal combat and and street fire and such um so evo 2022 lineup this is this is actually a very curious one um so there's no like smash titles if you if you notice on here uh whatsoever at all let's uh let's go over to this screen here so Street Fighter V, this is probably going to be the last year Street Fighter V shows up at EVO. So this is going to be a bittersweet moment for Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V has been around for five, six years now, I think. Maybe even almost seven years. Um, so this this title has seen so many add-on packs, so many different season passes, so many costumes. Um, it has literally, Street Fighter V has literally launched a career for so many people in the FGC. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, Guilty Gear Strive, of course, that's going to show up. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive has been a fan favorites of everyone's. Um, if you're looking at anything of like an anime fighter, Guilty Gear Strive is like the newest, truest thing that everybody... There's still a pretty decent uh, player base on it, but it is starting to fall off a little bit because they have been getting a little bit more of like, this character is gay and we want you to know about it. And then also, you know, that side of the community has really been pushing for, for strive to be like representative. Of, and so it's just, it, yeah. Um, this could be the last year that we see MK 11 also in this lineup um, because M MK 12 should be up, to, uh, up right around the corner, possibly this year at game awards. We might end up seeing MK 11 get, or MK 12. I mean, get a, get a teaser of some kind. So this could be the last year of like, so MK11 is, is kind of controversial. Um, there, I still say the majority of players like it, but there's a lot of like the MK fan base. that was just like, they got stuck on MKX and it was the starting of their channels. It was the starting of them getting into the FGC. It was the starting of them being really good at a fighting game. Hell, it was for me also, you know, MKX taught me basically how to do, uh, full string combos and how to link stuff together and everything that being said i still like mk11 just more just on the feel of it uh mk12 hopefully it feels really good uh street fighter 6 also funny enough kind of looks and feels well it looks i don't know the feel of it because i never got hands on with it but from the looks of it it seems like it's kind of in the realm of mk11 so if mk12 ends up being and and street fire six ends up being something like mk11 we could see we could actually see more uh or a couple really big like the two biggest fighting game franchises that there is out there go down to a level where even more people can jump in and, and actually do a bunch of combos and everything which could be really cool you know you could actually have a whole lot of new blood get you know brought into the fgc um tekken 7 this is definitely got to be last year tekken 7 uh last year should have been or maybe even two years ago should have been the last year of Tekken 7, but pandemic and everything, they uh, they pushed for a new season. So Tekken 7 arrives once again. This is got Like I said, this has got to be the last hurrah for a lot of these games. Uh, Strive's probably got one or two more years. Uh, KO15 is brand new, so this one is, I think this is actually the first Evo that KO15 is in. Yes, because it just came out this year, earlier this year. Uh, I'm not big in the K King of Fires. Some people are. Um... I know there's some cool characters, but just the combat system itself, I just, eh, I'm a little, a little iffy on the combat system. Melty Blood, that's another anime fighter. Dragon Ball, of course, is an anime fighter. Dragon Ball, this might be the last year for Dragon Ball also. Uh, we'll see if they do another season or not of Dragon Ball, but I think um, DNF Duel is probably going to try and take over the, the Dragon Ball spot, which, in all honesty, if it does, that's cool because Dragon Ball just consists of Goku, Goku versus Goku, Goku, Goku it's like the same lineup on every single match. So if we get DNF duel, uh, to take over, uh, grand blue fantasy, I have no idea about that game. I, I have never even played it before. Skullgirls, same thing with that one. Uh, these might be newer games. I have no idea. So yeah, Evo. Um, so on the back end, the business side of Evo, uh, real quick. So the reason why this is all in blue, well, I mean, Evo's main colors is blue and white, but, um, a big reason why Evo is back and is being funded properly and everything. So the original owners of Evo, the ones that, that one of the original owners anyways, that co-founded had some, uh, some, some troubles we'll say. 
some pretty bad legal troubles and some uh some professional troubles um to do with the younger talents and everything we'll just say that so evo went away for a couple of years and then it was down to like combo breaker and such um but evo is back because basically playstation and pokimane's uh company talent company they both chipped into basically co by uh, evo the the biggest fighting game event so evo if uh if you know what wrestlemania is basically evo is wrestlemania of dfgc that's the, it's like they they bring in all the fgc from around the world you go into an arena like literally like a sports arena um and you have you know 18 to twenty thousand people in there and little stage and yeah it's just the whole place is going absolutely incredibly insane over all the matches and you know people become you know celebrities pretty much up on that stage um sonic fox to uh oh god what's the uh you know like um sonic fox is, is one of the big ones because he's just a showman through and through but um oh god i'm trying to think like uh daigo he used to be you know big up on the main stage and everything um she's oh, trying to think perfect legend every once in a while gets up on the stage there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of anyways um so yeah this is all sponsored uh and basically the uh, the winnings and everything is all done by sony and playstation which is pretty cool because fighting games have been mainly like the main thing of the of fighting games has usually been on the playstation anyways for the last like 10 years so especially when the PS4 really got its grounds, uh, you know, got its foot on the ground and started really pushing ahead with, like, having Street Fighter Five be exclusive. Think about this. Street Fighter Five has been around since the PS4 really got its big steam and, and got going. That's how long Street Fighter Five has been around. Hell, I was training in Street Fighter on Street Fighter Five when it first came out in the betas and everything, and that was... God, that, that was, like, six, seven years ago because I was still only doing YouTube. I wasn't even streaming at that time been around for a while um but yeah pokimane um so a lot of people are like oh god pokimane the thing with pokimane is she gets a bad rep from the internet because she was one of the originals to really hit it big um and actually like have really good business sense behind herself but also her team too she she built up a whole team around her and and has done multiple stream teams and and this that and the other thing um yeah, yeah, she's she's just done nothing but help the the streaming platform in all honesty. So her being behind Evo, I mean, I've tuned into her streams a couple few times, and, and funny enough, like I was watching her uh, watch episodes of uh, Kitchen Nightmares, I do believe it's called the, the Gordon Ramsay show, and the way her her business mind was kicking it when she was watching the show, it was very telling of like what her her business is to do with Evo. It was good. It was common sense business wise stuff that she was coming out with. So, you know, some people, they start spouting off with the mouth on stuff and, and it, you know, doesn't really line up. Uh, she was doing a good job. So it'd be interesting to see because she is going to Evo also. This is going to be like the first time she she shows up at Evo. And in all honesty, if, if you get in good with, with Pokey, she's probably also going to be like talent scouting while she's there, of course. Um, it could help. It could it could build somebody's career. It could literally um, give somebody the keys to the kingdom of of their own career. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's really good news seeing all the Evo stuff show up and everything. Uh, August fifth to seventh, it's one weekend. Everybody flies out to Vegas, and uh, it's just a giant weekend of like there's like twelve different streams that go on of of Evo coverage of all these different games. You have side tourneys to the official main stage to you know, little mini tourneys and you have arts, uh, art uh, alleys and everything that, that go on, meet and greets with everybody that are streamers and YouTube content creators and everything. Evo is huge. For one weekend, it's it's almost like a, it's like a, like an E3 or a Comic-Con or something. That's what Evo, like the size of it. So uh, yeah, yeah, really cool news there. Um, to keep going with the PlayStation news, uh, introducing PlayStation Stars, an all-new loyalty program. So this is an interesting one. Um, so you join for free. So PlayStation had uh, a couple years, uh, what was it, probably like 2018, I think they they stopped it. Um, they had a program where if you got, if, if you bought movies, if you bought games, if you got trophies, like every like third platinum trophy, you could get like a $10 uh, PlayStation gift card. 
Um, so they're basically bringing that program back with PlayStation Stars, it's called. Um, interesting thing. Uh, so let's uh, let's just read through it real quickly. Throughout our company's 27-year history, we have been continually moved by how meaningful gaming experiences can create fond, lifelong memories for players. All of us at PlayStation take special joy in creating unique products and experiences that delay our fans. This includes everything from our consoles and critically acclaimed games to community challenges such as Seize the Throne uh, and Treat Codes. So Seize the Throne and che- uh, Treat Codes. I like that, Treat Codes. So Seize the Throne, I uh, I actually signed up for this uh, a little while ago. Also, um, special events call upon players to join together in a chess-themed celebration by, by uh, playing together to complete three stages of community goals. Players can reach the King's Tower, access the Air Chamber, and breach the Throne Room. Including, yeah, so PSN avatars, one of a kind themes for the PS4. Also, I did this, I got the avatar, got the theme. I was already on the PS5, so I really haven't ever used it. But, um, bigger, bigger prizes include, uh, like Pulse 3D head, headsets, PlayStation store cards up to a hundred dollars. Um, yeah, so that's one of them that they've done. And then treat codes, I actually don't know what this one is PS5 treat codes. A contest that puts you and fellow gamers at the center of a, a globe-spanning code hunt. <laughs> uh, sounds a lot like Microsoft's uh, original loyalty program. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they already, you know, Microsoft still does Bing rewards and everything. I, I actually get a little bit of cash here and there. That's that's actually how I bought my uh, MOB of the show. I, I did Microsoft Bing rewards by a PlayStation exclusive game. <laughs> um, and also the Bing rewards is probably going to end up helping me possibly get a, another stream that is going to be very DMC. It, it's just going to make the DMC s- spike up severely on the stream because I already know that the games are they have licensed. They are just licensed music games. So um, yeah, that's a little hint of possibly something that might come up in the future. I've been working on it for a little while. Um, so starting today, a series of fourteen unique codes resembling PlayStation controller inputs will appear online on social media. Oh, this thing, right, right, right. So if you find the code, you punch it into the website or whatever, and then you get. Uh, I think it was um, cash codes and everything. More codes you find, the more opportunities you'll have to enter the win. Um, yeah, earn codes you'll provide to win a PS5 console. Means every code. Oh, okay. So this was for the console one, right? Because they, they had one that was for like gift cards and stuff. But this one is for like winning a PS5 console. So they've done these things on and off. Uh, a little bit, but now this one is like bringing it back to like, you know, if you, um, uh, let, let's just read the rest of it. Uh, today I'm re- reveal PlayStation stars, a brand new loyalty program that celebrates you, the player for being on the ever growing gaming journey with us. PlayStation stars will be free to join when it launches later this year. Uh, once you become a member, you'll earn rewards by completing a variety of campaigns and activities. Our monthly check-in campaign simply requires you to play any game to receive a reward. Uh, while other campaigns require you to win tourneys, earn specific trophies, or even be the first person to platinum a blockbuster title in your local time zone. So if it's a PlayStation Studios title and you're the first person to platinum it, boom, you get like a, a probably like a ten dollar gift card or something. Um, opportunity to earn loyalty points. Points can be redeemed in a catalog that may include PSN wallet funds, select PlayStation Store, uh, select PlayStation Store products. I wonder if that could be like the night lights or the uh, or a PlayStation Five stand or like a fucking controller, like a limited edition controller or something. Uh, PlayStation Plus members enrolled in the stars automatically earn points by purchases purchases on PlayStation Store. So I'm wondering what the date is going to be when you. Uh, what I would say, save up a bunch of like all the PS. So if you're if you're platinuming out PS Five games, save up the PS Four versions of them. <laughs> Especially like the PS1 games, like holy shit, those are going to be super easy to collect on this stuff. Um, unfortunately, I already did IQ, uh, but I'm I'm working on Ape Escape right now. Um, like Klonoa, uh, that game is going to be probably super easy to platinum out. So if I run the PS4 versions of it, I should be able to get the platinum trophies and have it count on that. Um, as part of the PlayStation Stars, we're unveiling a new type of reward called Digital Collectibles. And this is the most interesting one. Collectibles are as diverse as our portfolio of products and franchises. 
There are digital representations of things that PlayStation fans enjoy, including figurines of beloved and iconic characters from games and other forms of entertainment. So I'm wondering if you log into a website and then you all of a sudden you have like this trophy case. And if you get platinum trophies, it just like pops up. That'd be very, very cool. I've been I've been really wanting them to do something like this. You get a platinum trophy and then all of a sudden, bloop, a, uh, a figurine or whatever, or like the trophy of it shows up on the trophy case on a website or something when you log into your PlayStation Network account. I think that'd be super cool. So then it, platinum trophies become even more of like a, you know, you really earn something from getting them because, I mean, shit, I got like, I got what, 31 platinum trophies and it's just it's just a number on on the console and on a website so if i could get like little figurines or something off that'd be that'd be awesome that'd be epic um uh, there will always be new collectibles to earn a ultra rare collectible to strive for or something surprising to collect just for fun i wonder if the ultra rare could be like if you platinum out both the ps4 and 5 version of like say last of us part one or something uh when that comes out or God of War Ragnarok or something, then it gives you the ultra rare, like, oh my God, you went above and beyond platinum it out on two different console platforms. Again, you know, um, I wonder if you'll gain anything from your previous trophies. And that's, yeah, that's the other thing too. Like, could I just see 31 platinum trophy figurines just go bloop and pop up onto the website or something? Like, I I'm I am also very interested in seeing like what what you get or if it's just going to be because the last time the last loyalty program was like only in this specific you know from this year to this year could you earn stuff it wasn't like the whole thing of everything that you've done over the years um brings to mind past gaming memories and make you excited for well this right here uh, we hope this new program brings uh to mind past gaming memories while making you excited for the future of PlayStation what this reminds me of is the um, the PlayStation Museum thing there that they did the uh, the Astro Playroom thing that they did for the PS5 where it felt like a PlayStation Museum. This really remind me of that. And if they took half of those little little you know momentum things that they did, um, that is almost like a trophy case, you know, looking little 3D thing where we can take and you know swing, like give us a fucking app on the PlayStation and then. Like if if we do Uncharted or whatever, you know, like say we platinum out Uncharted or something, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like a couple figurines of all the different Uncharted games, and you could like you know swing it around with your controller and all that stuff, and and look at it and, and whatnot. You know, I could have some like Resident Evil ones and everything, but it's, it also says like PlayStation titles, so it's probably just going to be PlayStation Studios exclusives. So first, PlayStation drops the whole thing of like PlayStation Studio titles have to have a game trial um and now they're dropping this for it's like little little mementos from the playstation studios titles xbox and nintendo don't do this stuff like steam might be the closest thing that i know of that that does the stuff where they give you like cards or whatever but the cards don't really do much um so this this could be really cool um especially if you are like able to earn cash back for all the purchases and everything because that's a big part of this loyalty program um you buy a seventy dollar game, maybe get ten, fifteen bucks back. That'd be really nice to see, uh, especially for um, if you here. Hmm. So, like that game, pause. I do believe or stray, stray. I keep calling it pause, but stray is coming out on the PlayStation Plus tier launch night. It comes out. I do believe it's a PlayStation Studio. I'm, I'm I, I, I have it right here. Um, let me let me look. Go to the game hub. I'm I'm I might actually do no, it's an Annapurna. It's an Annapurna game. But it's it's launching on the PlayStation Plus uh subscription service tier thing. Uh on July nineteenth. I'll probably do a I don't know. I might do a midnight stream for it. We'll see. It looks kinda interesting. It's a little platformer, and you know me, I'm I'm a sucker for platformer games. Um but uh what would be interesting is if so Say you platinum the game out, you get a ten dollar credit. That would that ten dollar or fifteen bucks or whatever the hell they give you, that credit could actually go back into those developers, even though they put the game on there for free and you and you didn't pay fifty, sixty bucks, whatever for that game. That could go back into buying DLC for it, which therefore the developers could get paid once again. So, if PlayStation did this right, they could actually make a subscription service thing. 
that actually gets the developers paid in the long run. That would be a big like kick, slap in the face, kick in the ass to Microsoft right there. Because right now, Game Pass, the, the you know the dev teams for Game Pass, they don't get any money outside of like DLC sales, and that's like DLC sales is like maybe <laughs> you know it's not it's not guaranteed cash that they're getting. They're just getting enough cash to make the game to put it up on Game Pass, and that's it. Um, so this could be interesting. This could be a very interesting thing of like both consumer and developer standpoint on this. Um, so let's keep going. It's PlayStation game catalog lineup for July. Now, I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because um, uh, so we had the PlayStation Plus tiers drop. Uh, I did a full stream showing off like how the emulation worked on on all of it for PlayStation One titles. Um, and of course the other games, uh, like NBA 2K22 dropped on there. Um, you know, games like Ape Escape, uh, I'm looking at like what I have downloaded here that I got from there. Uh, the Artful Escape, Tekken 2, um, let's see here, Dead Cells, Fighting EX Layer, Empire Sin, uh, Eagle Flight, like all these games dropped on this transference, Trials Rising, Wipeout, um, like all these games dropped and everything and everybody was like wondering, are they going to actually update and upgrade, you know, the, the list of games that are being shown. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit distracted, but yeah, I, I had, I had a couple few different people coming through and asking like, are they going to be updating this or is this just like a one-time drop and they're, they're going to forget about it. Well, for all those that are asking that check this lineup. So Stray, brand new game, released day one release on PlayStation Plus and Aperna. So it's not PlayStation Studios, PlayStation, you know, Sony. Everybody that was like whining, complaining, saying, well, I want, you know, God of War to drop day one. They're, that's just dumb. <laughs> Uh, but Annapurna, they have a little bit different funding methods and everything, so they can drop a game on on like Game Pass and and PlayStation uh, Plus tier. Now, I do believe Sony also funded Stray to get made, so that would it was in the contract most likely that it would launch day one. But also, Marvel's Avengers. So this game, you know, this game actually cost. <laughs> the the uh the publisher uh, square enix it cost them money uh they they lost a lot of revenue on avengers this game did not do very well at all but if this game gets thrown if they have fixed this game up considerably possibly at all and this game gets thrown on to the uh the playstation plus tier and word of mouth starts getting around like maybe the avengers game is is better put together now or whatever because it's been like a year or two since it's been out and they have like dlc that ha i'm pretty sure it's all free dlc for all the expansion packs or they could also see just from the expansion packs for people that played it before and they're like well there's something new to do in here i'll just i'll just drop in to check out like the the hawkeye expansion pack and uh there's a thor expansion pack that dropped for this and whatnot um because of the uh, thor love and whatever the hell war war and love or whatever the movie's called there the new thor movie that uh, dropped in as an expansion pack. On the flip side of that, Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Integrate actually, is uh, is another one that's dropping. And that's a huge one. That's, again, Square Enix, uh, but that's also PlayStation exclusive. It's also on the PC, but we'll just say it's PlayStation Studio, you know, or PlayStation exclusive uh, made by Square Enix. So that game sold crazy amount <laughs> that's one of square's biggest sellers and that's also on here so square and ubisoft is what we're seeing here um Saintro also on there maybe to get you know eyes on that's it's, it's definitely a marketing thing of course um so ubisoft is probably about ready to drop a new assassin's creed title there uh yes actually we do know uh september they're about ready to drop the new assassin's creed title they've already basically said it um, so you have a big lineup of Assassin's Creed games in here, um, five Assassin's Creed titles, two Saints Row titles, Final Fantasy VII Integrate, and Marvel's Avengers. That's pretty good. Uh, you can also get No More Hero PSP game, Loco Roco, also the PSP game that are going to be dropping too. So no PS1, no PS2 games? Shoot. Um, so here's the, the entire list right here. Jumanji, the game, really, I might check it out. Um, spirit of the North enhanced edition. That's kind of cool. Yeah. The Ezio collection. So that's three games right there. 
Freedom Cry is a, is a full-on uh, expansion pack. Rogue Remastered is probably one of the best Assassin's Creed games that a lot of people just skip because it was it came out between the PS uh, PS3 and 4. Um, Black Flag, a lot of people love that one. I don't care for that one as much. Unity is probably one of the best Assassin's Creed titles that there is for storyline-wise purposes and everything. Um, they have considerably you know, fixed it up. It's also going to be very interesting running Unity because Unity is a hard one to run, but when it runs right, my God, does it look good. Um, you know what's missing is Syndicate is missing out of here. They got damn near the whole lineup in here, except for Syndicate. Interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah, a very good lineup from Ubisoft. Once again, Ubisoft is working directly with PlayStation doing all this stuff. Um, and then, and then a few other studios also signed up. So PlayStation is still on a roll. Like, you know, if you're, if you're still in that boat of like, well, it's not game pass. It's getting pretty fucking close to Game Pass. <laughs> um, that's that's a really good solid lineup right there for for new games. And this is uh, again like the the month update. So next month we're gonna see another list, probably something like this, also um, with major titles being dropped on there. Uh, so we'll we'll continue on. So we are proud to officially join the incredible team at PlayStation. We are excited for the future of our company, and we are inspired to bring together players from all over the world to form lasting friendships and memories. So yes, officially as of right now today, Bungie is officially part of the PlayStation Studios team um, or lineup, I should say. Uh, it was an ongoing you know, thing of them trying to actually buy it, and uh, so... This is uh, what, what you got to keep in mind is that uh, a lot of times when you hear like PlayStation is acquiring a studio, it's they're still going through the legal things. I would just like Microsoft does not actually own Activision just yet, but it's probably it's like there's like an 80 percent chance it's probably going to go through. Um, so, yeah, Bungie. Could we see? So here's here's my here's my thing. Could we see Bungie? get made into an, an extra studio. So a lot of the employees from Bungie, they used to work on like Call of Duty and stuff. Uh, and I do believe there was, there was part of like the old MW2 team, MW3 team that, that jumped over to Bungie um, when it went in, when, when it went indie, basically independent. Um, when it broke off of Microsoft. I wonder if Sony's going to take the Bungie team and be like, Hey, so you guys have been working on all this Destiny stuff and everything. Would you guys mind trying to check out something like a like a kill zone? Would you guys mind checking out something like an infamous? They specialize in first person shooters. I wouldn't give them SOCOM, but something like Kill Zone, that could be right up their wheelhouse. Kill Zone and uh Destiny somewhat similar. Um, you, you know, in, in between like the, the systems and everything. Now, would that mean kill zone might turn into kind of a, like a looty booty shooter possibly, but if, if Sony get, tells them, Hey, let's make this into a full on story driven, you know, action oriented, you know, call of duty S <laughs> campaign game. Um, I could definitely see Bungie getting back to its roots and doing something like, you know, super huge in the kill zone universe. Um, so that's, that's where I'm like, Hmm, will we see it for the next like two years that we might get a teaser in the next two years, but it's probably gonna take them like four years to make it unless it's already been in the works behind the scenes for the last year. Then game awards could be very interesting where I would say probably game awards. We might end up seeing something where it's like PlayStation studios and Bungie presents bah, 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 bah. <laughs> whatever the, whatever they end up working on. Um, yeah, could be super interesting on that. Um, continuing on here. So this is, this is another interesting one here. Um, so what we were hearing before was, uh, so WD black series, Western digital, they have officially partnered with PlayStation to bring you the officially licensed NVMe SSD for PlayStation five. Um, the reason why this is interesting is because everybody's like, what is in the console is a Samsung device. It is a Samsung SSD, as far as I know, um, that your that your whole thing is running off from. So this is actually a two terabyte, where usually Samsungs are only one. Um, I would much rather stick with a Samsung, but I've had good 
I've had good uh, history with WD also, for Western Digital. Um, I've never had anything crap out from WD, just the same way, but Samsung seems to usually work a little bit faster. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting that they went WD with this instead of Samsung because Samsung has been working nonstop with PlayStation with all their hardware stuff. I mean, Samsung works with both Xbox and, and PlayStation, but um, yeah, yeah. It's just super interesting that, um, that they would sign off on this of like WD instead of Samsung. So uh, if you're looking for an expansion uh, for your SSD storage on your PlayStation and yes, this SSD storage. So there is one that is inside the system. And then you, if you take the, if you pop the plates off your PS5, um, there is a back cover, you unscrew the cover and then that's a, that's an extended storage. Uh, so you can put another two terabytes into the back of the PlayStation. So you end up having three terabytes overall, the way the games are going, I might actually be looking into one of these, um, SSD drives in the future also. Um, so yeah, just be on the lookout. If, if you can't find a Samsung one, then they have an officially licensed WD one. Um, WDs have the highest, uh, uh, Mark Sony recommends that WDs have the highest uh, throughput. Mm. I just, I don't know. I've always, I'm a Samsung boy. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to my memory units, I, that's what I've always, I mean, I, like right here, I can, <laughs> this is a WD and God damn it. And this is a WD. Like I, I've been using them for, for years myself also. These, uh, this is a brand new one. This is actually the one that I use for all my storage. And then, uh, actually the one that is, I I'm saying Samsung and everything, but in all honesty, like the one that I use on my PS5 right now is a WD storage. The one that I use on the computer is a WD storage. And then these two that I use for, uh, like video storage, uh, for stream replays and everything are also two WDs. So, like I said, I don't have anything against WD. I just I I've just found personally that Samsung seems to work a little faster. Um, they both do the same thing. <laughs> they both do the same thing, but I don't know. I just I'm a little bit more of a fan of Samsung. Um, although Samsung is more pricier, so if you are in the realm for looking just for an expansion thing, then yeah, WD. Um, and when it comes to like Mark Cerny recommending this right here, he's recommended the Samsung one also. It's marketing. You know, that's what he's doing. Um, either which one will work, though. So, yeah, if you can find either which one of these, what I would say is if you can find either which one of these on sale and at a good price, pick up either the Samsung or the WD. They're, they both work really well.